Hi, I'm Gino, and music is a big part of my life. You can find me performing on stage with National Philharmonic at Strathmore, and right here in Sound Impact's Time Travel Goes Digital series. So join me as we travel up, up, and away! In a distant land, far into the future, with no music, who will unlock the sounds of the past? I repeat, Do not fear. Is not Sound no. Impact is here. Sound Impact musicians stand united on board their time travel machine, venturing around the world through time, discovering musical treasures. Time to travel. I'm Sophie, and I'm going to invite you to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Stretch your arms and stretch your legs, too, because we're going to move and shake our bodies. Music invites us to move, which is great for our minds and our health. I will be joined by friends who will play for you and who will teach you some traditional folk dance steps. Time to travel! Up, 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 and away! Guten Tag! In episode two, we met the grandfather of all composers, Johann Sebastian Bach. Bach wrote six suites for solo cello, and each of them have five dance movements. Now, even though Bach didn't travel much during his lifetime, his music was influenced by dances from all corners of the world. Let me introduce you to some of them. The Allemande is from Germany. The Courant, or Corrente, which means running, comes from Italy. The Sarbande is a beautiful dance that originated in Mexico during the Spanish influence in the 1500s. The jig is a lively dance that comes from the Irish jig. During the Baroque period, musicians played on instruments that look different from the ones that we play on today. They played on gut strings, which are different from steel strings, and their bows had a big arch in the middle of it. They even had a different fashion style back then. Here is my friend Michael playing a bore, a French dance, and you can see what the dancers look like during that time. dances that Bach wrote about for solo cello. Time to travel! Up, 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 and away! Bonjour les poussinots, bonjour les poussinettes. Welcome to France in 1858. The can-can is a popular dance that originated from this country. It has its roots in one of the social dances of the times, le quadrille. 
which is a dance that is similar to square dancing in the United States. The Cat Can is a high energy dance marked by moving skirts and petticoats really, really fast. The word can comes from the word canard, which means duck. This dance was not in high regards by society at the time. The notion of the word can can points to the waddling and the quacking of a duck, which ultimately becomes a risque way for female dancers to show off their legs and kick up their skirts, and for male dancers to show off their prowess. Here is my friend Catherine Pilkington, who is the co artistic director and co founder of Company E. She usually dances modern dance, but today she will be switching gears and show you how to dance the can can. <laughs> and I'm here to teach you a can-can. So first thing is that we're gonna put our hands on our hips. Then we start with lifting one knee up, you put it down and with that same leg, we're gonna do a big, big kick forward and down. And then we do the other side. Knee up, put it down, kick forward and down. Let's practice again. Knee up, foot down, big kick and down. Knee up and down. Big kick and down. And then at the very end, there is a special surprise where we slide down to the floor in a split in a big finale. We're going to do four slow times, and then when the music gets really big, we're going to speed it up. Here we go. next. My friend and violinist Anne will show you. Time to travel! Up, up, up. Namaste! Welcome to India in 1910. India is a vibrant country filled with many different cultures and traditions and over 780 spoken languages. Countless music and dance forms are a huge part of India's rich culture and history. The oldest classical dance tradition in India is called Bharat Natyam. This ancient dance was created over 3,000 years ago to share religious and spiritual ideas, as well as to provide entertainment. It started out being performed only in temples and in king's courts, but in 1910 the Indian people started an uprising so that it could be performed in theaters and now in classrooms around the world. There are three elements to this dance. Facial expressions, hand gestures, and footwork. These three elements combine to tell stories of mythological characters and to highlight lessons of good versus evil. Typically this dance is accompanied by Indian classical music called Carnatic music. Carnatic music is usually performed in small ensembles with the melody provided by the violin held in a different position than we use to play Western classical music. Check out our friend Priya as she dances the Bharat Natyam. Sarah is going to show us the next dance. Time to travel! 
up, up, and away! The Hora dance originated in this region. The word Hora is found in many Balkan languages. They share several meanings, round, the circling around the seasons, and also to celebrate. The Hora is an expression of happiness. It is a folk dance performed in a linked circle that is danced in weddings and other celebrations. First, we're going to start with our arms up. Usually, you have your hands linked in a circle. And so if you have a parent or a friend nearby, you can grab onto their hands and give this a try. But for now, if you're by yourself, go ahead and put your arms in the air. We're going to step our left foot out to the side. We're going to step our right foot back behind. Step your left foot out again, and then kick that right foot in the air. Then step to the right and kick the left. And you start all over again. You go left, behind, left, Kick, right, and kick. And just keep repeating the same pattern. Behind, left, kick, right, and kick. All right, you ready? Let's give it a try. <laughs> Republic in 1844. The merengue is a traditional dance that originated from this country. Partners hold each other in a closed position while they bend their knees slightly to the left and right, making the hips move with a limping step. Legend says that this dance was invented by a peg-leg pirate. Arr. The leader and follower move in the same direction throughout the song but the dance can be danced individually. Merengue is one of the simplest Latin dances. Look at these kids, even they can do it. The traditional instrumentation of the merengue calls for a conjunto típico, which is an accordion, a two-sided drum called a tambora, which is held on the lap and played by one hand and a drumstick, and a guira, which is a cylindrical metal rhythm instrument. Here is Melissa Melendez, a violin teacher in Costa Rica. She will be teaching you the steps to the merengue. I'm so excited for you to learn the steps to this Latin dance. Enjoy! the basic steps for merengue. Are you ready? Let's get started. So you will do one step with your left foot and one step with your right foot. So we do left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Make sure that your knees are a little bent so your hips will move naturally. We can go forward, we can go back, to the side or turn around. Got it? Let's try with the music.
back with Sophie. Let's go. Time to travel. Up, up, and away. Ciao. Welcome to Italy in 1533. The ballet is a formal dance that originated from this country. The word ballet is from the Italian word balletto, which means to dance, to jump around. Ballet began in the Italian Renaissance courts as a form of entertainment. It spread from Italy to France when Catherine de' Medici, a patron of the arts, a big supporter of music and dance, married the French king Henri II and brought ballet into the French courts. Hence, the official vocabulary of ballet was gradually codified into French over the next hundred years. From a court dance, ballet later developed into a theatrical concert dance in France and in Russia. In ballet's early days, mostly men were expected to perform the more extravagant and intricate footwork. Dancing en point, which means dancing on your toes, became popular after the French Revolution when men were discouraged to dance ballet and more women were allowed to join in. In ballet, ballerinas are often depicted as heavenly, beautiful, and not of the earth. This is why they dance on their toes, making them look like they are floating and have almost no contact with the earth. Here's an excerpt of the video of Kimberly Marie Olivier, a ballerina from San Francisco Ballet Company, dancing in her kitchen to her father-in-law Rufus Olivier from the San Francisco Ballet Orchestra playing bassoon. <laughs> Counterpoint here to uh, introduce you to another ballet specialist, Jamie Trepanier. Oh, hello. Welcome to my home. I was just doing my morning ballet stretches. My name is Jamie. I'm from Canada, where I study ballet. Every movement and step in ballet either starts from or passes through one of these five positions, and I'd like to show them to you now. First position. Your heels are touching and your toes are opened out to the side. The leg rotates from the hip. So we have first position, second position, third position, fourth position, fifth position. I'm going to show you one of the very first exercises we do in a ballet class. It's a movement called plié, which means to bend in French. So we're going to stand in first position, heels together, toes out to the side, legs straight and body straight. And you're going to bend your knees and stretch your legs. Bend and straight, keeping your back up straight and tall, bend and straight. Maybe you'd like to try this at home. Wasn't that heavenly? Okay, it's that time. Time to travel. Up, up, and away. Welcome to 1890. The waltz is a highly popular ballroom dance built around a three-beat pattern. It is simple and elegant. 
The word waltz, in German, waltzen, means to revolve. So we often see it characterized by slides and turns. Variations of the waltz include the rapid whirling of the Viennese waltz and the gliding and dipping of the slow waltz, sometimes called the Boston waltz, which was introduced in Boston during the 1830s. This beautiful dance evokes romance. Please go grab your favorite person or your favorite stuffed animal so we can do the waltz together. You're back. I'm so glad. We learned there are many ways to move our bodies through different types of music and cultures. I hope you enjoyed our dance exploration. My friend Juan and I will play a tune you will hopefully recognize. It's a type of music you learned in the previous episode. It's music you might have heard in a movie. We will be joined by all of our friends to waltz together. adventure. You have learned many things, but there is still a lot of music we must uncover from the past. Until we meet again, your mission is to try out one of the dances you learned about today with someone at home. Join us for our next time travel adventure when we learn about music and cultural identity. Up, up, and away! I'm Peter Gajewski, music director and conductor of the National Philharmonic. I hope that you enjoyed Sound Impact's time travel adventure and will continue to join NatPhil as we explore music around the globe. This past spring, as the pandemic kept National Philharmonic's musicians from coming together as an orchestra, they filmed themselves performing solo pieces offering what cellist Yo-Yo Ma called Songs of Comfort. Please enjoy these performances that we call musical notes, as we all look forward to a time when we can gather again and make music together. Hi, National Philharmonic fans. My name is Sarah Matayoshi, and I'm a violinist with NPO. This is my husband, Peter Kane. He's a clarinetist. We want to share a duo for you today by Darius Neo. And it's from a suite for violin, clarinet, and piano. This particular movement is only for violin and clarinet, and it's entitled Jeu, which translates to game. 